Hey everyone, I'm back with another fun tutorial and today we're going to create this cool looking nebula galaxy scene uh, with no simulations involved. So let's jump right into it and get started. First, I'm going to create the star sphere. So let's drop down a sphere. Dive inside. Let's change this to a polygon and increase the frequency. We're then going to drop down a scatter node and scatter some points across the surface of this sphere. Turn off relax iterations and randomize point order. We don't need those options enabled. And let's add another zero to the total count. And this will essentially be our star sphere. So now let's drop down a attribute randomize node. And I want some of the stars to have a uh, unique color. So the attribute name will be CD. And that will apply a lot of different colors to all these points. Now we need to generate a P scale. P -scale. So let's drop down another attribute randomize. Change the attribute name to P scale. And let's just start with a minimum value of 0 0.0001 and 0 0.0005. Okay, and we might have to adjust that later on. We'll name this our star field. Now let's uh, create the nebula itself. So we'll drop down a tube. Orientation will be on the x-axis. We'll make it a polygon. Let's increase the columns and we'll make the height, let's say 25. So already we need to make our star field a lot larger. Let's go back there and let's see. Let's try. Yeah, let's make it 20. Okay. So back to our tube, we're going to drop down another scatter node, turn off randomized point order and relax iterations. I also want to turn off the max points because I'm going to go over a million points. To start off, let's do 4 million. All right. Now what we want to do is drop down a point bob. dive inside and we're going to drop down an add node as well as the anti-alias flow noise and what's awesome about this node is that it's going to create really interesting shapes in these points like a lot of unique tendrils and you'll see that in a second so we'll put the position into add and into the position of the flow noise we'll put the noise into the input two of the add and then the output to the position. Now let's right click on the noise node, go to VEX VOP options and choose create input parameters. What that will do is allow us to adjust these settings right here on the point VOP without having to be inside of it. Let's just change the signature to 3D noise. And let's dial in these settings a little bit. So for the frequency, Let's do 0.5, 2, and 0.5. Looking good. And now let's set up our camera real quick so we can see what this looks like from the inside. So we're going to control, click on the camera, and click on this little lock so that we can move our camera while looking through it. So let's zero out the rotation. Actually, let's get it into place. Be zero. Let's make this 90. Okay, now let's uncheck this, the lock. And we're going to move our camera to the very beginning. And while looking through it, 
let's go to view and change the focal length to 35, which will give it more of a fisheye look. So now you can see that we have all these really cool tendrils created from that uh, flow noise inside the point bob. Back inside of our nebula, we need to create a p-scale. So to do that, we can just go to the star field and copy this inside of our tube. Let's paste it. All right, And then let's drop down a transform node so that we can add some animation to this nebula. And to do that, in translate, we're going to do dollar sign $f divided by, let's try 100. And let's click play. Yep, that speed works for me. OK, so now we, what we need is some of these larger stars that are closer um, to the interior of the nebula. So we'll label this tube nebula. And let's just copy the tube and the scatter. Actually, let's just alt click on the nebula and drag it to create another version. And we'll label this stars. Dive inside. And let's jump into the scatter and only create a few of these. So let's do 500. And I want these to move a little faster. So let's make this 75. Yep, that looks good. OK. Let's also change the p scale so that these are larger particles. Maybe 0 0.001 and 0 0.00. .00 three. And we'll dial in these settings after we look at the render. So now let's drop down a redshift light dome. Under the light options, we'll disable the background so that it's not pure white. Under the out section, we will drop down a redshift render dive inside. Under IPR, let's turn on live SOP level updates so that we can make changes and see them in real time. Let's increase the min and max samples for now, 64 by 128. And that should be, that should be all we need for the time being. Under shop, let's create some shaders. So the first one will be a redshift material for our nebula. And let's turn down the reflection. Alt, click and drag to create another one. And this will be our, let's see, this will be our stars, the larger stars. And now what we want to do is drop down a redshift network. And this will be for our star field. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So because our star field has the colors, right? We want to be able to use that CD attribute inside of our shader. And there's a way to access that. And I'll show you in a second. So under shop, we'll go into star field, hit tab and type in user so that we can get the RS color user data. And the attribute name will be CD. Then we're going to drop down a regular Redshift material node. We're going to pipe this into the base properties diffuse color and then the out into the surface. And for the reflection, let's just dial that back. OK. And we should be ready to do a test render. Let's just save this real quick. Let's go over to our render view, make sure that our camera one is selected, and hit render.
you'll notice nothing's rendering because we don't have any geometry in these um, geo nodes. These are all just points. So what we need to do is under Redshift OBJ particles, we need to render objects as particles. I'll do the same for Nebula and for stars. Now let's try to render that again. Okay, so you can see that it's now coming through and it looks like we need to tweak a few settings. So first for our star field, it looks like the P scale is too small. Let's change this. That's too big. OK. That looks good to me. And just to make sure the color is coming through, let's turn off the nebula and the stars because a very important thing we didn't do was apply the shaders to these geo nodes. So for the star field, let's go to the render tab and under material, let's apply the star field. For nebula, we'll apply the nebula shader. And for the stars, our star shader. So render again. There we go. Now you can see that all of our stars have those unique colors. So let's give some more points to our nebula. Under the scatter, let's try 7 million. Awesome. And let's dial in our shaders a little bit more. So for the stars, I'm going to go to the overall tab, change the emission to white, and increase the weight by 0 0.5. For the nebula, I'm going to make the color sort of a blue. And for the emission, set that to 1. And this will just give it a, a sort of hot uh, inner core color. Let's try to increase the weight by 3. There we go, maybe a little more. OK. What we also need to do is increase the scale of our interior stars. So under the P scale, let's try, oh, that's too large. It's looking good, maybe less than that. All right, that's looking pretty cool. So just like that, with no simulations, you can easily create a nebula inside of Houdini. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I plan on releasing new content at least once a week, uh, maybe twice a week, whenever I come across a cool idea that I think you all might be interested in. Thank you.